and to President Trump's written answers to the special counsel. Chief National Correspondent Ed Henry has more on the story from the White House. Ed. Harris, great to see all kinds of signs that Robert Mueller's probe is finally coming to, the, to a head with the possibility of more indictments coming, uh, also the possibility of a scathing report written by the special counsel coming soon that could be highly critical of the president as Mueller zeroes in on two key subjects, that summer of 2016 Trump Tower meeting and also the role of WikiLeaks in the campaign. Fox News confirming two of the written answers the president provided to Mueller's questions were really re repeats of what he said publicly. The president responding he did not talk to Roger Stone about WikiLeaks releasing the emails of a top Hillary Clinton aide and that he did not know about the meeting his son Don Jr. had with other officials at Trump Tower where Russians were reportedly <clears throat> offering up dirt on Hillary Clinton. This may explain why the president, while not specifically naming key figures in the case like Jerome Corsi and Paul Manafort, lashed out at Mueller on Twitter today, charging that he is trying to pressure witnesses to lie about collusion. The president retweeting a meme featuring various Democrats as well as uh, Rod Rosenstein, the deputy attorney general, with the tagline, now that Russian collusion is a proven lie, when do the trials for treason begin? Now, you saw Rudy Giuliani there. He's pressing this even further in an interview with NBC News, charging Mueller, treating Manafort like a terrorist. Fox also confirmed Manafort's legal team briefed Giuliani and other members of the Trump legal team about Mueller's focus. Giuliani says this kind of joint defense agreement is normal, but Democrats are charging you couple that with the president now holding open the possibility of a pardon for Manafort, and they say that could be obstruction of justice. Manafort is clearly putting all his eggs in the Trump pardon basket. He's gambling, and it's a big gamble that Trump will pardon him. He is playing both sides. He is completely untrustworthy. The president telling the New York Post in an Oval Office interview about a Manafort pardon, quote, it was never discussed, but I wouldn't take it off the table. Why would I take it off the table? He added, you know, this flipping stuff is terrible. You flip and you lie and you get the prosecutors will tell you 99 percent of the time they can get people to flip. Now, Democrat Mark Warner tonight is charging this would be an abuse of power if the president pardons uh, Manafort. But again, remember, the president just said he's not taking it off the table and, and the pardon power is an absolute power that he does have, Harris. All right. Uh, Ed Henry, thank you very much. Good Judge day. Andrew Napolitano, Fox News senior judicial analyst, I've asked to come with me tonight because we were together on Outnumbered Overtime this afternoon. You've done a deeper dive in all of this. It's 175 pages, uh, the plea deal right. with Manafort, and you've scooped up more. What, have, what can you tell us? The significance of the plea agreement in, in which he pleaded guilty before a federal judge to the charges filed against him in the second trial. First trial, he was convicted by a jury in Virginia. Second case is in Washington, D.C. At the same time that he pleaded guilty to the federal charges, he also pleaded guilty to the as yet unstated and uncharged state crimes. Mm -hmm. What's the significance of that? They're in New Jersey, Virginia, New York, and California, states controlled by the Democratic Party and the president's Pardon power does not extend to state crimes. Mm -hmm. So if the president were to pardon him tomorrow, he'll be indicted immediately and arrested immediately in, in furtherance of prosecution in any of those four states. All right. And that was the question that we had this afternoon. You know, would these states go after it? Uh, I, I am curious, too. Did he... Do we think he lied? Do we know? Or was it a situation of resist? Because well, those are two different things. Yes, you're right. It's, it's an interesting question. When the FBI interrogated him, it was after his guilty plea. It was after he had pleaded guilty. He was a convicted felon. He's treated very differently than, say, Jerry Corsi, who's a potential witness, is being, uh, is being treated. We don't know if, if he lied, but we know that the government said in a pleading that he lied, and we know that his lawyers said in the same pleading he didn't lie. What does that mean? That means before the judge can sentence him, she needs to know whether he lied or not. How is she going to figure that out? The government is going to put FBI agents on the stand. They're going to say, here's okay. what we asked him, here's what he told us, here's why we believe it's a lie. And when you look at what they say, you'll see the roadmap of where the Mueller prosecution team is finally headed. What is the end game now for the prosecution? 
it appears that the end game is to uh, find whatever evidence, and this is not necessarily the end game, they've been doing this for almost two years, whatever evidence they can find about the president's involvement in illegal activity. The, the easiest case for them to prove is conspiracy because it's just an agreement. It doesn't actually have to have been uh, consummated. We, we believe that from the documents that Jerome Corsi has released just yesterday, mm -hmm. uh, which showed what the guilty plea was that they wanted him to enter, which oh. he eventually declined. Uh, all right, real quickly, just back to Manafort for a second. So what about this process tells us what was in the president's written questions and answers? I don't think the written questions and answers are that big a deal because I, I, I know Rudy Giuliani and I'm sure there's not a word in there that they can't defend. The, the answers are probably in, in very general terms unless there's some nuggets in there that are deceptive. Here's what I mean. The government certainly knew that when it was negotiating with and questioning Paul Manafort in the presence of his lawyer, his lawyer was telling Giuliani everything they were talking about. Might they have planted some things in there? some little seeds that they wanted to get in the president's head to see if they could trick him into giving an, an wow. unlawful answer. Can the government do that? It's, re it's regrettable and it's despicable, but the answer is yes. So, Prosecutors can trick and deceive their witnesses. You, and I know you're a judge, so you've seen this before, but you make this sound so insidious. It is insidious. Isn't the goal just to get the facts? No. The prosecutor's, okay. goal, the prosecutor's no. goal is not to be fair. The prosecutor's goal is to charge and convict. They let fairness be dealt with by judges and juries. That is their attitude. Wow. That is flatly honest. Uh, it, it's from a lifetime of being in this, this yeah. business. And sometimes so, it's very frustrating. So what should Paul Manafort do real quickly before I have to let you go? Now? Mm -hmm. I don't know what he can do now. It depends on how grave the lies Is he going to see prison time yes, no matter what? Yes, he's going to be indicted for the lying to the FBI. Each lie is an independent crime, five years But that's lie. federal. The president can pardon. But on yeah. those state charges and those four states, no. He, he can, he, he's, wow. he's got a long road ahead of him. Okay. Judge Napolitano, I'm glad you were on this road with me today. Pleasure, Harris. Thank right. you. Up next, an update on...